Hi, I'm Brody Conover, an Assistant Attorney General in the Office of Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine. Today I'm standing in the basement of the Ohio State House, located in our state's capital of Columbus. The State House is home to the Ohio House of Representatives and the Ohio Senate, which together comprise the General Assembly, Ohio's legislative branch. Behind me, you'll find the Historical Museum, which includes the Ohio Constitution exhibit. This is a perfect setting to allow us to talk about Ohio's Constitution, or should I say Constitutions. Hold that thought. Come on in. First, let's talk about the events that led up to the formation of Ohio's first constitution, the 1802 Constitution. Ohio was originally part of the Northwest Territory, established in 1787. Today, the lands of the former Northwest Territory hold six different states, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin, as well as part of Minnesota. The first step towards statehood was the Enabling Act of 1802, which authorized the residents of modern-day Ohio to begin the process of becoming a state. In the early months of 1803, when the first Ohio Constitution was signed on this table, Ohio became the 17th state to join the Union. But let's dig a little deeper into what drove the framework behind Ohio's first Constitution. There was a real concern among delegates to Ohio's first Constitutional Convention when drafting the 1802 Constitution. They felt that too much power had been given to the governor of the Northwest Territory. So, the 1802 Constitution, like the federal model, called for three branches of government. But rather than equal powers, the legislative branch was given the most powers. For example, the legislature appointed key judicial and executive officers, including the Attorney General. Under the 1802 Constitution, the governor was the only executive official elected by a statewide popular vote. Edward Tiffin was Ohio's first governor. But again, because Ohioans resented the extensive powers of the governor of the Northwest Territory, Ohio's governor had very little power, and that resulted in a weak governor's office. The Constitution of 1802 also required the Supreme Court of Ohio to meet in each and every county in the state. In 1803, there were only 17 counties, but by 1851, Ohio reached its current level of 88 counties. That's a lot of counties and a lot of miles to cover. This constitutional requirement overextended the judicial system and became unmanageable as the number of counties rapidly grew. Because so much power was consolidated in the General Assembly, there were many accusations of corruption. For example, the state debt exploded during the early 1800s because the General Assembly funded private companies. With a strong but corrupt legislature, a weak executive, and an exhausted judiciary, it took less than a half century to realize that change was needed. And that change came in 1851. Unlike many states and the federal constitution, Ohio's constitution allows for a constitutional convention every 20 years. In 1850, voters elected to have that constitutional convention. And although we haven't had a convention since 1912, every 20 years, voters still have the opportunity to call for a convention. The new 1851 Constitution balanced the power among the three branches of government. Well, the redrafting in 1851 kept the same basic structure with the three branches of government, but it made several changes that I think made our government more efficient and more effective. The 1851 changes also made some restrictions on the debt that the state could incur. There were some restrictions placed on taxes. We didn't have a poll tax anymore. Uh, that meant you didn't have to pay a tax to go uh, vote. That change didn't come about in other states until much later than 1851. Uh, and finally, for the judicial system, it was really a significant change. Uh, most significantly for us in the judiciary was the creation of intermediate appellate courts. So to have that intermediate level of appellate review uh, was really significant, both in terms of reducing a burden on the judicial, on the justices of the Ohio Supreme Court but also in terms of getting an additional layer of review for the people of Ohio. The change to elect statewide office holders was drastic, but it created the system that we have today for electing our office holders. For example, the Ohio Attorney General's office was created in 1846, and at that time, the Attorney General was appointed directly by the General Assembly and not by the voters of Ohio. All of this changed uh, with the constitutional changes in 1851. There, the Attorney General became a statewide office holder, and citizens of the state of Ohio were given the opportunity to directly elect him or her to office. While the original duties of the Ohio Attorney General were not as expansive as they are today, the 1851 Constitution certainly laid the groundwork for today's Attorney General's office. Compared to the 1802 Constitution, the 1851 Constitution had much more similarities with the United States Constitution, even though the Ohio Constitution was far lengthier. 
Ohio's Constitution contains over 36,000 words compared to the federal Constitution of only 9,000 words. The Attorney General's Office has the duty of enforcing all 36,000 of these words. So, if the Constitution is questioned, the Attorney General's Office helps defend it. Many of these cases are before the Supreme Court of Ohio. The Supreme Court is the final judicial authority on the Ohio Constitution. For example, in 2001, the Ohio Attorney General's Office defended the constitutionality of the state motto, with God, all things are possible. The Supreme Court of Ohio, as the final judicial authority of the Ohio Constitution, found that the motto did not violate the First Amendment of both the federal and state constitutions. The United States Constitution and the Ohio Constitution create uh, three branches of government and put in place some checks and balances among those three branches. So in that way, the two constitutions are, are very much the same. But there are some significant differences. The Ohio Constitution is pretty easy, comparatively uh, pretty easy to amend. The United States Constitution has only been amended 27 times. We only have 27 amendments to the United States Constitution. The Ohio Constitution has been amended more than 150 times. So when you think in terms of weight and density, Ohio, the Ohio Constitution is much more specific to our needs and what the citizens of Ohio really want. Well, the first principle to remember is that the United States Constitution provides that it and all laws of the United States are the supreme law of the land. But I think the best way to really think about the interaction between the Ohio Constitution and the United States Constitution is to think of the United States Constitution as the floor. Those provisions in the United States Constitution give us our basic rights and privileges as U.S. citizens. Now, a state can go above the rights and privileges that are provided in the United States Constitution, but we can't go below. And that's not an old issue. That's something that we deal with right up until today. I hope you now have a better understanding about the history of Ohio's two constitutions. And remember those dates the next time you're playing trivia, 1802 and 1851.